Welcome to the first session of ABJ Kolkata Literary Festival 2024 titled Abracadabra and the Magic of Life with Boishakhi Shah in conversation with Ramanjit Kaur. Boishakhi Shah is an award-winning international speaker, author. Boishakhi Shah works towards advancing consciousness on the planet. From Asia to Europe to Africa to South America, she has not just traveled, but dwelt in different countries for several years studying. Ramanjit Kaur is a film and theater actor and director. She is the founder director of the Creative Arts and Arts Academy in Kolkata. She has been a lead actor of the Padma Shri Neelam Man Singh Chaudhary's group for more than three decades. Let us welcome the delegates to the stage with a huge round of applause. Good morning, everyone. How are you all doing? Uh, many congratulations to AKLF, uh, Anjum Di, Mena Di, and the whole team of APJ to, for another edition of a wonderfully curated AKLF. And uh, it's lovely to see a lot of young faces in the morning because the book today, Abracadabra and the Magic of Life, is. Uh, written by Bishaki Saha over here. And it is going to tell you that if you believe in your dreams, they do come true. If you believe in the magic of life, it creates magic in your life. So um, let's start with a passage from the book so that you get an entry into it and see how it attracts you or how does how do you relate to it? I had a dream I was flying. Those days, I kept having a recurring dream. In my sleep, I would see myself flying. This dream came to me often, more nights than I can count. I would run to the edge of a cliff or the threshold of a high building's rooftop. And when I approached the periphery, I would start cycling with my legs in the air and the momentum of the movement coupled with air buoyancy would keep me afloat. I could fly in any direction I wanted just by tilting my upper body in that direction and continuing the cycling motion with my legs. I could also go up and down in the air by adjusting the velocity in my limbs. I intuitively knew how to do that. This way, I dodged many enemies and life-threatening situations where they would not be able to harm me because only I knew how to fly. These dreams felt so real that even in my first waking moments, I believed I could actually fly. It was surreal. I felt that my dreams were asking me to fly and all I had to do was try. Warm welcome, Bishakhi. Can we have a round of applause for her? Um, the book is really about magic and the magic that life holds in its arms. And I would like to ask her from a life-threatening situation to feeling the magic of life, uh, what were those situations that led her to recognizing the magic of life and then believing in it and then putting it into use so that her life transforms completely? Well, uh, thank you for that uh, lovely reading of my book that's actually the foreword that's how the book begins and uh, i want to give a little uh, pretext to that uh, i was like you uh, your age uh, at university maybe a bit older than the majority of the population here 
and uh, I was suffering from a crippling back injury. I, uh, um, it was like two, three years uh, with this injury and uh, the trauma of the pain that this back injury had caused me. Uh, I was so, you know, uh, traumatized by the whole thing that I was thinking of committing suicide because I thought that my life had no meaning, that uh, this existence had no meaning. Well, that was many days, many years ago. And uh, one night I did something crazy which spontaneously healed my injury of many years and that was my first encounter with magic. Here I'm not talking about some kind of illusion. This is real magic, real magic of life. And when I healed that back injury, I realized that there is so much more to life than what your doctors would tell you or your teachers would tell you. We have come here for an experience of ourselves, for self-actualization. And from that moment onwards, one by one, I started experiencing a lot of magical things that I took note of. And uh, then the magical experiences kind of multiplied in my life. And uh, uh, at a very young age, I left India um, after class 10. Uh, I went to Singapore to do my uh, university and junior college. And during this time, I had this back injury. Uh, and after uh, my uh, graduation, which was in computer science, I felt that uh, there was more to life than just this. So a lot of magical things happened, which took me out of Asia, to Europe, to Africa, to South America, North America, and Central America. So right now, I live in Costa Rica, which is in Central America. And I just came to India uh, for the launch of my book, Life is Abracadabra. And I want to tell you all a little bit about this book so that you can also pursue your big dreams in life. And uh, even if you don't know how to start or where to start this book through my stories and through the insights that I gained during my travels across the world will help you find your inner guidance. Should I continue? Absolutely. Okay, so um, what else uh, should I say? Well, uh, I want to uh, tell... So if you could start right from, uh, you know, the crippling back you've talked about, but she wanted to travel. But most of us don't have enough means to travel or travel to so many places that we want to. So how did all these things that you were dreaming of uh, kept on becoming true? What was that that uh, took you from point A to point B? You were in Singapore, you got this yeah. scholarship and uh, then what happened? Yeah, so uh, I was studying computer engineering and at the same time I was learning German. And uh, it was my big dream to go to Europe, to Germany. But I neither had the money nor the opportunity, only my dreams, you know. So what I used to do during my exam times, I would take my books, go to the Changi Airport in Singapore, uh, sit there and wave at all the planes that would go towards Europe and tell them that, you know, say hi to Europe, I'm coming soon. Or, uh, you know, uh, greet uh, Germany for me, you know, uh, ask Germany to welcome, uh, you know, to prepare for my welcome, things like that. And then uh, a few months later, something very strange happened, which I call the abracadabra kind of magic. And I won an all expense paid trip to Europe. So this was once again another magical uh, synchronicity or coincidence, whatever you would call it. Uh, and I, uh, you know, had the most beautiful time of my life in Europe because it was a dream come true and I didn't have to pay anything. And once I got back from Europe, I joined a student exchange program. And uh, with that program, I went to Africa, uh, South America, Central America. And I lived with local families, eating their food, wearing their costumes, working in those countries, not for one or two days, but for, you know, several years, uh, learning about their culture and tradition and religions. And uh, during this time, uh, I had a lot of um, uh, like I had to face a lot of danger and life-threatening situations 
and sometimes I felt that there was no way to come out of that. You know, uh, I was preparing to die and then something so magical would happen and take me out of that situation that I realized there was some higher power that was protecting me and that was helping me to do this journey. So I call it... I'll, I'll quote you over here. Then one day while taking my bucket bath, something within me told, uh, told, within told me, have faith, you will go. So these kind of moments happen when we are in sync with our inner selves and the surroundings where we are. And from there you faced a, your wallet got missing, you were yeah. with no money in a country and um, I mean which was not India and uh, faced a lot of yeah, robbery. I, I want to talk you know, about that yes. because that's the most interesting story in the book. So I was in Africa and uh, in my second month, all the money that I had taken with me there got robbed. And you know, those days it was not easy to send money and all that I'm talking about some 10-15 uh, uh, years back. Uh, so when I had to leave Africa, I didn't even have half the ticket money. Uh, to come back and no matter uh, which airlines I was asking for the ticket prices they were all more than double of what I had and it seemed like uh, leaving Africa would be impossible and then one day I was taking my bucket bath uh, before going to work and uh, something inside told me have faith you will go and uh, just a couple of hours later that day I did something different and what I did, that is in the book, you have to read the story. I met a strange lady who gave me my tickets back to India and her name was Faith. I am not kidding you, this is a true story. <laughs> From, um, you know, injuring her back, almost escaping some of the robbery situations, actually having her wallet getting lost uh, she also got fired and she calls that chapter the birthday present so most of us when the situations are very bleak we kind of lose hope we kind of give it up and we say why me you know why is it happening to me um, but Bishaki over here took that as a sign from nature because the nature was actually taking her forward. Yeah, it was the best gift of my life because that same day I got another job in a better company with a better salary, with better prospects and everything. So a um, lot of magical things started happening and I also think it was my belief in the universe that I was being protected, you know, that caused all these magical things to happen. So I uh, don't call it just a travelogue. It's more like a journey to destiny, filled with synchronicities, magical encounters, meaningful coincidences that materialized impossible dreams, that got me out of inescapable situations, that disentangled unworkable problems and saved my life many times, uh, laying in front of me a magical path to walk. So, um, I would request you to read yeah, a passage I, that you really wanted to read to yeah, the audience. Uh, so, you know, uh, we all uh, love to travel and uh, I want to talk a little bit about the kind of traveling that I did and uh, maybe it will inspire you to also, uh, you know, travel and uh, broaden the horizon of your thinking. So I want to read a little bit uh, that I wrote in this book. Traveling is never about money but about will. I pondered silently. People usually travel for pleasure. Rather, traveling should be used to expand one's horizon of thinking. I spent years on the road. With what money? What savings to bank on? Nil. I never even had enough for the tickets. Nonetheless, those were my best adventures. My fondest memories. Eating poorly. Sleeping on hammocks. Not comprehending local dialects. Communicating through gestures and symbols, depending on others for my survival, using currencies that were mere paper to me, befriending strangers, adopting strange traditions, breaking cultural barriers, treading lonely street corners, hoping I wouldn't get mugged, getting robbed, putting my faith to test, 
again and again. And after all of it, I have discovered a totally new person within me, metamorphosed by the treasures of the heart I had amassed over time and space. Thank you, Vishakhi. Uh, you all heard those magical stories. Uh, would you like to ask any question to Beshaki relating to all the situations that you face in life? Um, okay. So, coming to, you know, how life and death is a part of each other or completes each other and if we are in sync with the, the universe, it is always telling us something. She has this beautiful almost last chapter, a borboleta, how my deceased friend guides my faith. And I will read few lines here. Silent soul, as she tiptoed uh, tip out of her cocoon onto the curiosity of her existence, into the night sky upon the moon, a thirst for clarity and guidance, reflections of her inner silence, Torn in a paradoxical reality, questions beckoning, infinite patience. Traversing through time into eternity. So over here, I would like you to share how you talk about your deceased friend and I would leave the rest to you. Sure. Uh, so this particular story. Sure, please go Lovely. ahead. Yes, yes. Yes, yes it is. See, uh, we are always co-creating our realities with the universe. I am not playing this game alone and uh, I am not disconnected from the larger universe. So, whatever I needed to do in Africa, I was done and that magic had to happen. Uh, actually, uh, this is the context where I will come to right now. Uh, in Africa, people have beautiful soulful names like patience, like uh, love like um, uh, blessing. Well, it's not a coincidence because there is a meaning behind this coincidence. See, coincidence is considered as chance, luck or happenstance. Whereas uh, this word called synchronicity, when you notice it, you can realize that there is a deeper intelligence at work. And it is not just, uh, you know, mindless uh, coincidences happening. And uh, synchronicity, this term is co coined by this great Swiss psychiatrist Carl Jung. When uh, these synchronicities were happening to me, I didn't know that there was a term called synchronicity. Now I know that uh, what was happening was called synchronicity. So, when so you basically, met, when you met Faith, yes. I mean, what was your first reaction when you came to know that her name I was didn't Faith? know her name was Faith. Okay, okay. I met her. It was like, uh, you know, I'm walking on the road and I meet you. She smiled. She came to me. She asked me if I got my tickets and I didn't have the money to buy it. So I was just sharing my woos with her. And then she told me that, you know, I have this ticket for you, take it. I took it, you know, then I left. And before going, I was like, I don't even know her name. And I was like, by the way, what's your name? And she's like, Faith. And in those days, you know, I was all alone. I was very young, a young unmarried girl from a conservative society in India. I, uh, uh, um, I didn't know, like, you know, how to uh, handle all these things. So uh, when I met Faith... Uh, and she gave me the ticket, I was like, uh, this is the only way I uh, protected myself, just my belief in this higher power that was protecting me because I lived in some of the most dangerous countries of the world. Exactly. Like in Venezuela, so, in Nigeria, where they shoot you before they loot you. You know, people literally get murdered on the streets. Yes. And those how really did I protect myself in uh, those situations? situations? Yes. Um, any... Last you. word that you yeah. would like to tell the students. <laughs> yeah, so I yeah, want to tell you that audience. everything, everything is inside you. You want security, it is inside you. You want safety, it is inside you. You have big dreams, it is inside you to, you know, manifest uh, those dreams. Uh, like I said, uh, I did not need any big bodyguards <laughs> to protect me. I was protecting myself. And this book will show you how it all came together for me. And I say that these are not just my stories, they are humanity stories. Because if magical experiences are a possibility for one ordinary girl like me, 
it is a possibility for everybody That's but you true. have to tune into that higher dimension and you have to re recognize the help that the universe is sending you yeah. sometimes you may have a big dream for example uh, maybe you know your father wants you to be a doctor your uh, mother wants you to be an engineer but you want to be a rock star and uh, everyone around you uh, whoever there is uh, they don't support your dream how will you give birth to that dream that is the dream you came here on earth with so it is with the help of the universe you can achieve that dream and the universe will send opportunities it is the path of your desires that i call destiny you know there is a big difference between fate and destiny so fate is like there is no free will it's just happening to me and destiny is like it is happening through me not just to me beautifully said bishakhi and it's great to end our very first session of aklf at this very hopeful thought that we must live in sync with our subconscious and the environment around us which is called conscious living and that's what bishakhi's book talks about and whether a situation is negative or positive remember what richard bach said in illusions that all the people and all the opportunities in your life are there because you called them there what you choose to do with them is up to you thank you so much thank yeah, you bisha uh, before leaving and i just want to say one thing if if people ask you hey how is life you say life is abracadabra life is abracadabra thank you so much what's next for me well i already have another book written which i want to turn into a film in hollywood so i'm working on that well all the best to that thank a big you. round of applause <laughs> the book is here sure, sure. and uh, she is going to sign it for you yeah if anybody wants the book <laughs>